Welcome, this is the uh, Tennessee End of Course Algebra 1 Practice Test Number 3, Question Number 41. It's really hard to say it in some order that's different. Anyway, the question says simplify 4x squared over x squared minus 25 times x minus 5 over 8x squared plus 12x. As a preview, I'm going to say in the initial part of this problem, I'm going to show you how to factor it out and sort of, <clears throat> you know, mark things out that are in common on the bottom and the top of the fractions so we eliminate some things and get the correct answer. After that, I'm going to show you a method that you can get the answer if you have no idea how to do the math because you get to test day and you just lose your mind, uh, you know, nerves and whatnot. Um, it's still important to be able to get through a test, especially if you worked hard all semester. So I'll show you a method that has no mathematical validity that you can still sort of get the answer correct. But let's start out with the thing that makes, as a math teacher, me feel better, which is the thing with mathematical integrity. So I'm going to write this out sort of a longer form. What I'm going to do is see if I can factor anything. Now I have x squared minus 25 and what I know uh, just based on looking at it is that x squared is a square and 25 is a square as well because 5 times 5 is 25, that whole thing. So what I can do with this, with there's no central term, no middle term, no x term, is take the square root of the original number, so square root of x squared is x, square root of 25 is 5, write it down twice, and then I just want to make sure that I have different signs. This is supposed to be a 5. Um, the reason I have different signs is twofold. Number one, if I was going to do FOIL or you know multiply it back, negative 5 times positive 5 gives me the negative 25 that I'm looking for. Also, if you did the rest of it, you would see that the minus 5x that you would get by multiplying right here and the positive 5x that you would get for multiplying right here will actually cancel out. So you'll end up with no middle term, just like you needed it to be. So I'm going to put x minus 5 and x plus 5. The order of those doesn't matter, by the way. And on the 8x squared plus 12x front, I'm going to see if I can factor anything out of there, and I can. Uh, not only are 8 and 12 you know, multiples of 4, so I can pull a 4 out. They also both have an x. And, you know, look a little bit up on top there. So I'm going to uh, do 2x. Basically, I'm dividing them both by 4x, so, you know, take one of the, those things away, and four, 8 divided by 4 is 2, and then plus 3. So that's what I have uh, broken out a little bit. So the nice thing ab about this problem is that it is a multiplication problem, so I can sort of just extend this line out because it's all just one sort of big one big math party that sort of thing 4x and 2x plus 3 now that I've shown you that I'm just going to raise some of it to give myself a little bit of perspective anything that ends up in the numerator and the denominator here can be eliminated why is that well if I have 4 times 3 over 3, well this 4 times 3 is 12 divided by 3 gives me 4, so it's almost like what if I just did that and canceled them out? Or you do 3 divided by 3 is 1, 1 times 4 is 4. So anything on the top of the old fraction here can be uh, eliminated if it's also on the bottom. And You'll notice I have an x minus 5 here and an x minus 5 here. So it's starting to look a little bit nicer. I'm eliminating terms that they have in common. I'm going to rewrite it with this 4x sort of pulled out towards the front. And instead of 4x squared, I'm going to write 4 times x times x. It'll, make a p it'll mean something in a second while I'm doing this. So 4x times 2x plus 3. And then I still have the x plus 5 on the bottom. For these two groups, I'm pretty much stuck with them at this point. There's no 2x plus 3 on top. There's no x plus 5 on the bottom. They're in sort of a parentheses setup, so I'm not going to move them very much. But the 4x squared does have some uh, common parts. Uh, you could have left it in this form as well. I was just trying to make a visual point about why I was doing it. 4 divided by 4 is 1, so these actually cancel out. Uh, and x squared, if you want to do the, well, the 2 is bigger than the 1 on the bottom, so you do 2 minus 1 because um, when you're dividing the numbers, you take the exponents and do one less operation, which is subtraction, whatever. Anyway, there's an x on the top and the bottom, and they cancel. So I'm left with a final answer of x over 2x plus 3 times 
x plus 5. So basically you just factor everything out and uh, see if you can find some commonality in the numerator and denominator there and eliminate some stuff. And that's what you're left with. So the answer to number 41 is D. Now, I said I had something for you if you had no idea what was going on. This is that time. If you got what was going on there, please you know, just shut off the video and move on. However, for the rest of you, there's this. The reality is there's only one variable in the top and the bottom, and it's x. There are x squareds, but the letter itself is the same, indicating that it's the same number. I mean, x is 5, so x squared is 5 squared, so that's kind of where I'm headed with it. Now, the calculator uses your x value for uh, to graph, so this is this x value, not the one in the text section. So you can hit X and it does have a value. In this case, it's 10. If you don't, if it's not 10, go to the video for question number 40 and it'll show you how to lock it in. If you haven't seen this method before, the video for number 40 in this section has a better, has a decent explanation. I'm not going to go really deep into this side of it because it's a little bit more typing and I don't want this video to last forever. So I'm just going to type in what I'm seeing. Alpha Y equals will get you a fraction menu if you didn't know that. Uh, the ND thing would be numerator over denominator. So I'm just going to type in 4x squared, and then I'm going to click down, and then I'm going to type in x squared minus 25. Now, click to the right, do your multiply, go in and go into the fraction section again, x minus 5 over 8x squared plus 12x you hit enter there. At this point it should look exactly like it does exactly like it does here especially when it's x. If it had been b that still would work as long as it's just one of the variables. If there's two variables you can still do it but you need to use uh, the x value and then alpha and y. The other letters don't really work. They're not connected to the idea of how the graph is set up. So anyway I'm gonna write down 2 over 69. Now my assumption was that the answer was D based on the math that I had done earlier so all you all I'm going to do to test that theory <coughs> is to type it in. So I'm going to go into the fraction menu, type in X, click down, X plus 5 times 2X plus 3. Now when I hit enter here I'm hopeful that it's 2 over 69 and it is. So that's the answer. Let's try one that's not like this. So C is pretty close, so I'll look at it uh, from the perspective of this method to see if it gives me a match. So X minus 5 and 2X plus 3. And you can see it's not 2 over 69, it's 2 over 23. So once again the answer is D. Not a lot of integrity in that method, but if it's test A and you got to do what you got to do, there, there it is for you. So good luck.